we are live. Liad Goldberg, welcome. Shannon, welcome. Everyone on YouTube, Hello. welcome. welcome. Liad and Shannon have coffee. It's yeah. too late for me to drink coffee. <laughs> I have water. No such thing. Uh, no such thing as too late to drink coffee. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Oh my God, what's happening? Hi. There's um, me. some advertising playing in the background. Welcome to Drawn Together, episode 47. And uh, we're super happy to be joined by Liad today. Um, and Liad has this cool, dynamic, follow him wherever oh. he goes, camera yes. thing. I'm, is... I'm standing up, so I have a, a, a tracker on my face that semi works sometimes. Yes. Yeah, that's great. It really, um, it's got me, got me looking. I'm following you around, so that's cool. I would like to stand up to work more. I think it would be good for me. So that's cool that you're doing that. Um, uh, Rebato, hello, um, Cube Cloud. Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're drawing from. What you're going, where you're, where you're watching from, and drawing from. If you're going to be drawing along, what are you going to be working with? Um, we have about two hours. We're going to draw the ad or paint, and I have two or three reference photos. I hopefully I put the link in the description. You can grab a screenshot right now. Screenshot and grab each of these and there's a third bonus reference um in the the linked dropbox folder and i'm going to be starting with a, a warm-up sketch of of this one it's always yeah this this image here it's <laughs> and then working on into a, a longer piece of, of the second one but you can do whatever you like um and it's just really I'm, great to ha have you here. What will you I'm be painting, doing? Liad? So I, I probably will only be doing one. So don't feel bad if you only do one. <laughs> don't feel bad if you only do half or if you only get the eyes done. Um, that too. Yeah, it's just great having you here, whatever you're, whatever you're up to. You and can feel bad if you want to feel bad. If you want to feel bad, you. if you're inclined to do so, and that's what it's called for, feel bad. Go. Um, and if you'd like to post on social media anywhere, we have these at Drawn Together Show on Instagram, and you can use the hashtag Drawn Together Show, tag each of us. Our Instagrams are in the description below, and you can also follow Liad's, um, subscribe to Liad's YouTube channel, because he's doing a lot of oil painting streams I've seen, which is very cool, and, yeah. um, and Shannon's yeah. YouTube as well. You can subscribe and follow each to each of us. And now I'm going to show you some work, which is, is super cool because we've gotten to know each other from, from streaming and the Our Painted Lives community. And yes. I, I didn't realize you were a storyboard artist until recently. And that is so cool. And um, let's just have a look at, at some of the things you're involved with. So this first one, um, of uh Cra crapopolis yes is it's just like episode three has just come out it's still really fresh i think um uh, uh, season one is done i think it might be okay. it's on to season two at this point they were ah, season okay. one and two were short season three is a long season mm -hmm. and it's we're already working on season three so cool it's exciting yeah awesome uh so this is um, Liad is a storyboard artist, so this is not his piece, but he's involved in the creation of many things. And we'll get into that. I'm, I'm really curious about the, the process, uh, the behind the scenes of what it, what it takes to make an animated series. It's super interesting. And you've worked on some really awesome stuff. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Terry's saying there's no reference link. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, this is one that's on on Netflix, the the blood of Zeus, and Masters of the Universe. This is uh, it's 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 so cool that you you've worked on these things, which so many people like have so um, so many so much experience and association with. And yeah, it's uh, it was really interesting just looking through seeing seeing some of the projects that you have worked on. 
And I'm just going to put this here for a moment. Terry has told me that the reference link is not up. So you can tell us a little bit about um, yeah, the, that process, um, being behind the scenes, the storyboarding. So, so basically, every, everything that gets drawn and becomes part of the film has to be like sketched out first. Um, yeah. yeah. It's super interesting so, to hear a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, um, just to be clear, I wasn't on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the movie, unfortunately. I was on okay. the animated show, which was also good. I just, you know, people hear Guardians of the Galaxy, they think the movie. Um, yeah, it was yeah. an animated show as well on Disney XD. Uh, but it's really a collaborative effort. There's so many people that are involved in making the um, the animated shows. And uh, we... <laughs> Like we do all the storyboards. We basically make animatics, which are like pared down animation. So it's not all the, in, it's lacking the in-betweens and it's lacking a lot of the color and the, a lot of the backgrounds. Like you can see here, uh, frame side by side, like that was my drawing and that's what it ended up being. Yeah. Um, sometimes the character designs aren't even finished. So we're just like going off of like general ideas of what the character is going to look like and so on. That gets sent overseas to be animated, which honestly, like the people overseas are just amazing. I, I don't know how they do it. The <laughs> animation skills they have is just mind blowing. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, it's, and then when it comes back, I never, I almost never see it again after that until it's airs because it goes through so many different people to do coloring, to do, uh, you know, all the special effects, sound designs, editing. There's just so much that goes into it. Um, so it's really weird to be a part of something where you do you do this stuff. You, I get to I get a script and I have to interpret it. So obviously, you can interpret a script in many many ways. So you do get to influence it, but then you never really see your own drawings in a way yeah, <laughs> in it, yeah. which is very funny. Um, but yeah, uh, it's. It's a lot of it's a lot of work, a, a lot of quick turnarounds, a lot of times. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also a lot of fun, uh, especially when you're on good projects and good teams and stuff. You know, it can it can be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, if you ha cool. if, if you have specific questions, happy to answer. I, I just never know how much to get into things or not. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, any questions that people have, feel free to put them in in the chat. And it's really oh, yeah, interesting absolutely. if you if you check out Liad's website, there are some um, some videos that show these uh, animated sequences, um, and uh, on Liad's YouTube channel, um, uh, like this video that I screenshotted these from, that's that's up on your channel as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I tried to show side by side what what they you know what it what my storyboards were and then what it turned out to be kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but most of my stuff's also under NDA, so I can't show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, that, so that's things like we probably won't be able to talk about what you're working on now or stuff like that. Um, and that's a, such an interesting thing that yeah. the most of what you do uh, for for the job never sees a lot of day, <laughs> like beyond because it's like this. It's interesting. I saw Silas is here. That's awesome. Silas um, works in user interface, um, and it's kind of being part of something which is. Um, it's enabling that immersion into this world and it's such an important part of it. But the, the work that's being done is not the final product, um, which is different in Silas's case with user interface. But but being part of a big thing like that, I think is super interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll, there is a link for the references. Yes, I just put it up. It should be there now. Let me know down the in the description. It says grab the reference of Liad here. And now there's actually a link. So you should be able to grab that reference. Um, yeah, let's keep nice. looking. So that, that's something I'm, I'm really keen to talk a lot about, but we'll, we'll get into some of your oil painting, which is really, um, awesome. And I think it's, okay. it seems to be like a really interesting balance from, um, uh, what I imagine you, you're probably doing a lot of storyboarding and it's so different to this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I started doing oil painting because, um, I'd been working for so many years uh, for other people and either working for other people or working to get work for other people. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I really wanted to do more personal work and stuff that was like for me that, um, you know, I want to say kind of develop my own voice because I used to be big into comics. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, I veered away from that and I wanted to do, you know, just more personal work in general. Like it doesn't have to be all about me necessarily, but something that speaks to me in a more personal way. And also you see my hand in it directly, you know, Mm -hmm. whereas in storyboards, it's a team effort, which is great for that, you know, so. Yeah, totally. Um, Yeah. And just, um, you have a couple of pieces here. I've noticed a lot, uh, or or some of the, or how we know each other. It's uh, essentially through uh, Nicolas Oribe and yeah, um, our painted lives. And this is a couple of pieces that you've done there. And um, Nicholas. and I, I did him based off of the reference from your show too. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was totally cool. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's definitely where I remember connecting to you and you and being in the chat. And yeah, yeah, it's been now, really Nicholas nice. Uribe and uh, our painted lives was a, a, a big influence on me in the past. Um, I think like four or five years, something like that. Um, so I really, I really, um, I don't know. I, I love his channel. I like, I love Nicholas Oribe's work, his paintings and mm. his attitude towards things. I don't agree yeah. with him on everything, but I do love his attitude <laughs> in general on things. Yeah. 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 And that's been, um, for a lot of people, just such a, um, a, a great kind of encouraging, uh, creative, uh, impulse from our painted lives and um, this uh, dog is Zan here. <laughs> we were doing some yeah. dog drawing on the weekend. Um, super cute. Have you said this was the first dog you ever painted? Have you painted any since then? <laughs> uh, one sort of, okay. uh, <laughs> cool. I can show it to you. It, it's like I said, sort of, because it's very, um, uh, it's like barely there. Um, yeah. Wait, is it here? No, it's. Uh, I have all my paintings. Be not all my paintings. I have a bunch of paintings behind me, but they're they're here to dry sometimes, so I I lose track of them. Yeah. Uh, um, we just had a comment yeah. from Don Lee who says hi, Liad. Don Lee. Hey, Don Lee. Ooh. And um, about the 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 one of Nicolas that it has a Hellboy influence. Uh, since the yes. we were talking about Mark Mignola at that time. Yeah, that I, I felt like that was a, a cool, um, cool how the conversation seemed to have fl- flowed into your work on that piece. Really nice. Yeah. So you have your um... I, I tagged I tagged Mike Mignola on it, but I don't think he's done. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I was just trying to get trying to get Nicholas to be on Hellboy, not not oh, for yeah. me. I want him to be on it, you know? Yeah, I, I, I would also love to have that. Um, yeah that issue and yeah this is such a cool self-portrait that you did which will lead into us all drawing you and painting you too yeah. so um and do you do you have that oops dog painting uh Did let you? me yeah i'll find it real quick cool um i know i have it here somewhere it's just a matter of finding it yeah um yeah yeah but we can start painting it's all right and yeah, if I can't find it, I can't find it. I don't know where it went. Let's get to uh, it. Yeah. it. It's a very, it's it's a very like, the dog's barely there. He's like white, and you can just kind of see the face a little bit, but it's completely blown out. Um, I'll look for it later. Let's get start. I'll yeah, start cool. painting first, and let, then let, at some point it. I'll need a, a short break. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Um, everyone can do whatever they got to do. So I have these two references. I'll be starting with um, the frown and moving on to the profile. I'm just going to warm up a bit. Um, but yeah, everyone can choose whatever they like to work from. I'm and... probably going to do the front uh, facing one just because yeah. it has more shadows that I yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The shadow is really cool. But I, I was thinking when you sent the reference through us, so I don't think we've done a profile on John together yet. Okay. Um, I mean, I can do the profile if you prefer. Oh no, you you do whatever you feel like doing. The shadow shapes okay. are really cool. But um, okay. do you do you remember Shannon? Have we done anyone's profile? Yeah, um, Sina. I drew Sina on the. IPad. Oh, okay, but I did a different one uh, of Sina, which was kind of like a. Ah, 
So we had a reference, but I didn't work on the reference, uh, our profile, but I didn't work on that one. I see. Um, I, I picked the profile because it's not trying to intimidate me with its gaze. <laughs> That's fair. I've, I've been called intimidating before. Um, I'm not, uh, you said you were trying. <laughs> I, not trying. I've, I've, um, I, I once was trying to help a, an old lady at a, a, in a parking lot. She looked lost. And I was just like, we're, we're visiting my girlfriend's uh, mom and she lives at a, she lived at a, like a elder community. And so we we're at the supermarket there. And there was an old lady who clearly was like lost in them. Like, oh, do you need help finding your car? You know, midday, bright outside, no, no problem. I'm coming up calmly. And she's like, <gasps> and like holds her groceries to her. Like, I'm going to steal her shopping. <laughs> like, I'm going to take her, snatch her bag of, uh, you know, whatever she <laughs> bought at the grocery store. It's like, yeah. okay. Most parking lot crimes occur in broad daylight. So uh -huh. but that's fair. I don't really know. Good to by, know, I guess. By people that look like um, potential metal heads. I don't know what your musical preferences are, but I'm making all these assumptions and... about this photograph. I'm like, I mean, the you're not wrong. Intimidating me, and I you like metal. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do. Yeah. I, I don't play music on my stream because um, copyright, but also because I feel like most people just are not going to like my uh, musical taste. <laughs> That's interesting. Because I, I saw something else recently where someone's like, um, most people probably aren't going to like this music, but this is this is a band that I'm in. I can't remember who someone was posting. I was like, wow, that's really cool. So yeah. I, that's a common yeah. thread about heavy metal music is people that like metal say, most people don't like this. Yeah. But like they are like in a club. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe you I only saw it. You. There's a lot of you. Some of you are <laughs> up the street. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I've learned to appreciate it. Uh, so what um, were you thinking in the photo, Carla? Yeah. So, Carla, first, Adelaide, I love that your paintings make me think. That's cool. Oh, thank you, and, Carla. Um, I appreciate um, that. And love the reference. What were you thinking? <laughs> I, I was trying to get a variety of uh, reference and faces. Um, I also was thinking about, uh, a is it Andrew Kadima? Um, mm -hmm. Cause I, rem I remember his reference and I was like, his, his reference, his were fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really and I was cool. trying to do something fun as well. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking of music, um, one of the things that has influenced my art, uh, my, well, specifically my oil painting and goes back to what Carla was saying is that I, I like the ambiguity of some some music. You know, there are songs where you don't know exactly what they're saying in the song. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. <laughs> you know, it's not like a story. It's just a kind of an idea or a feeling, and everyone kind of interprets it a little different. Um, yeah. And I really like that. And I wanted to bring that into my painting uh, in some way. Mm. Um, so I try, I try to do that in my painting by like not doing. Uh, narratives that are like 100%, you know, obvious and clear without any like ambiguity to it at all kind of thing. Mm. That's cool. That's um, just thinking about some of your work that it, some of it has this, um, it was really interesting. Uh, but yeah, this kind of like the glare or the, the there's like a, a a lot of soft edges, at least in what I'm mm -hmm. thinking of right now, and the way yeah. things is kind of it's it's not totally defined, but it has that um, that kind of potential, th that feeling to it. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. The the haziness or the um, yeah. Uh, basically, I just I basically try and go for mood over <laughs> anything else. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, when I first started, I would use. I still use Photoshop uh, a lot in different ways. But when I first started, I was really reliant on Photoshop mm -hmm. uh, because I would edit my photos and I would use like uh, film, uh, what's it called? Like film effects, like um, 
I was using in the beginning like um, uh, silver plate, gla like glass plate effects mm -hmm. uh, to make, to like distort my images. And I'd, I'd use blurs and I'd, um, I'd bring in, uh, what's it called, uh, light streaks and um, all these different effects. I still do that to some degree, but I'm not as reliant on it as I used to be. Mm -hmm. Like I can now kind of do a lot of those things without without the computer if I need to. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's a um a really a really cool way to use the the technology to um like yeah, adding these elements. Uh like sometimes I remember um there was a group that Nicholas was part of called Death of a Coworker. Um and they shared it was quite a while back and it's not active anymore, but there were a bunch of artists that were drawing each other, painting each other. And I remember there was a comment about are they like the inbuilt Instagram filters actually do really interesting things to the color and just kind of like taking that um, technological aid to kind of shift something within the reference to then make a physical piece from. I think it's really interesting way yeah. to use it. Absolutely. And, um, and, I don't know yeah. if you... I don't know if you're familiar with the artist and I'm sorry, by the way, with all these live uh, things, if I ever talk over you, I don't mean to, there's just always a, a little bit of delay and I apologize yeah, for no, that. Um, no problem. I was going to say, are you, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist, uh, Jeremy Mann, mm -hmm. uh, he's well known. Um, yeah. He had a video on, he has a video on YouTube where he talks about his, like, uh, his photography, um, uh, what's it called um like how he does his photography and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it's a fun video he's crazy uh with his photography like there's there's no way i could do what he does uh, it's interesting don't get me wrong like and it's a funny video too he he's entertaining but i'm just like yeah you're you're insane i'm not doing that there's no way i can do that <laughs> what, what, what was he doing <laughs> oh like he's making his own cameras and like uh like he's taking a Polaroid um, film and like cutting it up and he made his own like dark room and he had to make a, a, a night vision thing so they could see in the dark room because the film is so sensitive to the light that he can't even use, uh, you know, he can't even use like the regular dark room. So I, it's crazy. Okay. Wow. But he had a really good point, which was uh, if you want, if you, if you have boring reference, uh, you're going to paint boring paintings, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, wow. So it's, it's not so, entirely right, but I agree with him. Yeah. Well, definitely having interesting reference um, definitely lends, like, like there's already something that is like this gift within the reference that's already there before yes. you even start drawing or painting. Um, well, uh, one of the big, one of my big, uh, like, breakthroughs in painting uh happened um i t i uh, signed up for chelsea lang's um a boot camp and she's a youtuber uh she's a painter who also has a youtube channel and stuff um and her boot camp was very informative but the big thing that one of the biggest things there was going over a uh, reference and getting like learning to set up the reference and how much of the success or failure of a painting often s starts before you even like take out the drawing utensils, <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. like just in choosing reference, it's already, uh, you know, you're already setting yourself up for success or for failure, so to speak. I mean, not yeah. entirely, but you know, definitely can make your life much harder. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. And, and like what you said about this piece, like the shadow shapes are really like, oh yeah, this is the kind of thing that I really enjoy seeing in a photo. It's like, oh, that's, that'll be fun to draw. There's, there's something to, yeah. um, something to draw there. Yeah. Okay. We've got moodism is a thing. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, hey John. Starting to see him. the wave of another Renaissance moodism. That's thank you. I guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, that's a little too much for me to take on, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this for sure. Um, with called tonalism. 
So it's all like based in like uh, really near value colors and it has like a, it's difficult to describe, but it's like, um, it's always like this liminal kind of dreamlike landscape or, or something, but what seems to define it is like the moodiness of it, the, the, the homogeny of the color values, I guess you could say. And that's tonalism. I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that more because, yeah, that's exactly, it's not always what I like. I do enjoy going high contrast sometimes, but yes, uh, I do enjoy the, yeah. the, I do enjoy condensing all of my, um, what's it called? All my values and my uh, hues and everything to make it very moody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like the, yeah, I, love that. I was just thinking, I'll, I'll just bring it back up. The, um, this one of the, the the one on the left of the the person smoking like the, the, yeah. the very limited kind of value range and yeah that's that's really cool that one does it but the the high key um there's a figure and it's like a Saroya painting but it, it's compressed there you go yeah there the we go. yeah yeah that's it's so good it's awesome yeah, yeah that it's one that, it's that the... compression of values that does it yeah, I had a good reference for that one. Like it was already kind of a high key reference. Yeah. And I, I pushed it even further. Um, and uh, yeah, that one, um, like I'm, it sold and I'm glad it sold, but I also missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> there was. <laughs> oh, the like, Mavs oh, 3. Want... You have the Joker hanging on your wall. It's actually, it's, it's not very easy me, for me to bring up things on the fly with the setup that I have. Um, yeah. Oh, but you've got the right, I did a cool. I did a painting of the of the Joker and I had to uh it's from the um uh the Joker movie the one that with the what's his name Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix yeah yeah I really like that uh, but I had to use my own hands for reference in it because at the time the movie wasn't out on um you know on like online or DVD or anything so oh, okay yeah cool everyone should go dig through Liad's uh, Instagram and you'll find that image or on the website. I think you put it up there as well. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been good about posting on uh, Instagram lately, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm slowly working my way back to it. I've been really focused on, on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been, um, I'm really happy to say I've, I've been streaming three times a week, uh, for since august yeah, which cool. is for me an accomplishment to like yeah, just totally. keep you know keep the routine up and keep it going yeah that's, that's huge that's really hard that is huge yeah and i saw that one of your streams from last week had like twelve thousand views <laughs> what's uh yes how, how does how does something like that happen do you think do you have any theories about what that could be I do. They're not flattering in particular. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's bots because like my, my last, um, what's it called? My last, uh, live, not even just my last live stream, all my live streams lately have had like my last one had 400 and something views, but they, they don't stay. They, they, uh, leave very quickly. Okay. They just like flitter through like, yeah. So I'm wondering if it's like bots just going through, uh you know through some for some reason okay the um yeah so not it's not the most flattering but like <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll take the stats you know yeah to, yeah yeah <laughs> if it help if it helps boost my uh you know my yeah. numbers yeah I I, bots. where's my bots at yeah maybe people could um have like bot farms that they commission <laughs> people could be like i need um a bunch of views Oh yeah, no, I would not. I would not take the chance of doing that. I'm just saying, like, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, no. I have no involvement in it, by the way. <laughs> it just, it's happening. That's all. Hey, Jared, good to see you. Um, hey, Jared. Jared's a friend of mine. So that's why I was like, yeah, Jared has uh, a cool question. Um, yeah. Do you they completely separate... separate your graphic art techniques from your painting? Do they influence each other? Oh, they definitely influence each other. Um, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, I wouldn't call it graphic arts because it's more like illustration or 
or storyboarding or you know comic books is what i'm assuming he's referring to mm -hmm. uh but yeah they definitely influence each other um having that that background in you know having a background in that does help i think in a lot of ways it i think um one being comfortable like making stuff up um mm -hmm. or you know i mean don't get me wrong i when i'm when i'm painting i almost always have reference but you know reference isn't is not perfect and sometimes you have to just kind of fake it yeah yeah and um yeah so i don't i don't mind doing that um i think it also just uh, influences my sensibility sometimes you know um I mean, a lot of the stuff I do isn't exactly the most action oriented, but I still like to have that. Um, I think there's still like a movement in my painting, the way I break things up and the way I like, you know, will use patterns and stuff um, in my paintings, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. But yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I would like to know... Oh. A, um, well, we had another question, which which kind of ties into uh, that, like how you've got two two very different uh, skill sets, but um, I'm sure that they must inform each other in some way. But um, sure. So, thank you, Guru Nadon. If you're here, I always have to put it through Google Translate. But um, was a uh, I love the Guardians. <laughs> um, these two worlds so the um like the cartoons and the storyboarding and the oil painting um mm -hmm. are both great patterns of yours uh with a question mark but I presume so <laughs> and they are very different that is the main differences between oil painting and film work or animation um your approach to the two worlds uh were they both considered or was that a life you chose um sometimes you plan something but then something else happens so yeah um what came first i think you mentioned like comics is probably you can see the comic comics came first before yeah. anything else i originally uh, wanted to be a comic book artist and i worked for years uh, when i lived in la um to be a comic book artist and i i did some indie comic work uh i will not claim to have like been a success in comics but i did do some work in comics um i was you know looking back at it honestly I, I wasn't good enough at the time i didn't recognize it but yeah uh definitely was not up to um up to par at the time but uh you know that was my first like my first passion and then um reality set in a bit if i'm being honest and i had to just like deal with things um and so i, I got into uh, just other things entirely i was doing um photo retouching and i did that uh for a living for years mm -hmm. uh and as i was doing photo retouching i moved towards uh, storyboarding all right and then i got into storyboarding and i was doing you know juggling two careers at the same time uh you know both uh doing uh, photo retouching and storyboarding and like i said the big thing that happened was i was just working for all these other people always doing what they what they wanted me to or i was working on portfolio pieces trying to figure out okay what do i think they want me to do mm -hmm. <laughs> to get a job and um a friend of mine uh who also did a uh, like photo retouching type of work. He was doing his own comic, uh, a, a children's comic, uh, Periwinkle Puss, I think it's called. It's for kids. Uh, I'm, I'm really bad with names. Um, so if I messed that up, I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, and I was just so proud of him. And uh, um, it, it was just so cool to see him make his own his own stuff. So that was one of the things that kind of pushed me towards trying to find something that was my own that, you know, I could be 
like I could make my own stuff. And anytime I did anything, you know, any comic book work, any um, comic book characters all felt like someone else's because yeah. it's their property. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into uh, oil painting, or I should say that's how I got back into painting. And then from there into oil painting, because um, yeah, when I went to art school, I, uh, I did learn painting, just not oil painting ironically what comics inspired you the most when you were younger um what artist? it's not the best comic in the world but um i was always a big fan of spider-man and um todd mcferline mcferline or mcferline i don't know how to pronounce it uh did a spider-man comic that's really famous um or used to be really famous um and it, it's where he's like fighting this lizard monster. Um, it's kind of a well-known one. Uh, like I said, I'm not saying it's the best in the world because it is not, uh, but that was one of my favorites. What's the best um, in the world? <laughs> uh, probably something Alan Moore has done. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking Alan Moore too. That's... <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, um... So have you have you been to like Comic Con and such? Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. I've done. San yeah. I used to do San Diego Comic Con every year, um, wow. and I um, for years I used to do the portfolio reviews. They they have a special area where you go to get your portfolio reviewed, mm -hmm. and it's a whole process. Um, and it's changed over the years. I have no idea what it's like now, you know? Um, it's probably, they probably use, uh, you know, some kind of computer system or something to help. But back in the day, it, you were just, I just spent most of the convention standing there waiting to get reviewed. Yeah. And, uh, and then years later, I also had a table, I was invited to have a table in Artist Alley, cool. um, which was very cool, yeah. Yeah, nice. So yeah, I've been there many times. And um, so for, I I saw you had a piece from a few years ago where you, where you did some fan art of He-Man. And um, yes. was that before you were working on the show? Or during? That was oh. right before I, well, okay. It depends which one you saw. Um, if, if it was the one I started and never finished of Kevin Smith, that was as I was working on the show. I mm -hmm. never finished it. If it was the one, uh, a drawing of He-Man, um, that I did right before I was on the show when I found out I was going to be on the show. Yeah. Because I'm just wondering if you, um, how is it to work on intellectual properties that you, I'm presuming that you're a fan of, if you're making a fan out of it already? Um, How's yeah, um, it's hmm. it's really fun, really rewarding, uh, but also it's very strange because what ends up happening, you know, you're making something new and, um, you know, sometimes it doesn't line up exactly with what you like remember or what you have in mind. And mm -hmm. so um, you have to keep that in mind as you're doing it and just kind of like push away the um you know the thoughts of like oh well it should be this or that or whatever but also uh a lot of times you get you get the little opportunities to like sneak in little easter eggs of stuff you you like and sometimes it's not so much an easter egg as much as it is like a um what's it called like just just kind of knowing the characters, you can bring in a personality that maybe wasn't written in at that moment kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it's fun. Um, yeah, I'd say overall it is fun, but it, it can be, it can definitely be challenging in that sense. Yeah. What's He-Man's Tiger's name? Hmm? What's He-Man's tiger's name? Oh my God, I'm so bad with names. Um, I know, me too, so I can't remember. 
If anyone Cringer? in the chat knows. Is it Cringer? Cringer? Know. Yeah, Cringer. Yes! His little tube Don Lee knows. changed ah. size because, like, to animate it, I guess they would just flip him over. So, like, he would make the same motions in the old cartoon, and then his tooth would be on the other side. And I always thought <laughs> oh, that's that was funny. interesting. You that's... could put that in the cartoon. That's, um, you could. Yeah. yeah. That would be exciting for me. Mm. Okay. Battle Cat. Yes, cat. he changes to Battle Cat. Yes. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Don Lee, too. That was the name I knew. What about Shira? She always kind of ticked me off a little bit, honestly. Like, <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I just couldn't watch Shira. Like, it was just so, like, she should have just been independent of He Man completely. Like, she only so existed the... for my demographic. Right. So the old, I mean, all of it was just marketing ultimately, but uh, the um, the thing that always bugged me as a kid was they would come out with these characters like there's Spider Man, there's Shira. I mean, there's He Man. There's um, you know, there's Thor. There there would be all these characters, and then they would come out with the like the female version of them, right? And inevitably, they always had more powers and more abilities and i'm like wait a second why do they get to upgrade every single time uh -huh. <laughs> and oh. i just you know whatever I, um i i think they should just make char I, character like new characters in general because having two of the same character regardless of anything is just kind of silly in my opinion but you mm -hmm. know whatever there's what powers does Batgirl have that Batman... I mean, they don't have powers, but, like, what can Batgirl do that Batman can't do? Good point. Batgirl does not have... You're right. Batman... <laughs> Batman Batman reigns supreme. Uh, although the, one of the new Batgirls, she, um, she couldn't talk because she was trained to be an, uh, an assassin. So she was, like... She Basically, the idea was that she was trained so much to be an assassin that she couldn't talk because it used up all of her brain to do that. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure she kicked Batman's ass a few times, but I could be wrong. I didn't read that one, I'll be honest. I read <laughs> up on it. I didn't read it. <laughs> do, you, do you still read comics? And do you watch the, the shows that you work on? Uh, no. I don't read much comics anymore, almost never. And I do watch uh, some of the shows. It just depends. Like um, the show I'm on right now, I do watch. Uh, the Some of the older shows I don't watch. It was just, sometimes it's a timing issue. Sometimes it's uh, um, at the time, like I didn't have Disney XD when, uh, when Guardians of the Galaxy came out. So I couldn't watch it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You could so it, it just kind of depends. The show you worked on, right? <laughs> I actually I bought some episodes on online, but uh, yeah. That's funny. I'm trying to type comments and I can't reach my own keyboard to tell Terry that this is adorable. Um, there. The drawing is looking good. I like it. I did like. I also, Dylan. I also like the drawing. The warm up you did. Thank you. The warm up, yeah. the warm up he completed in five. So I was, I looked down and I looked back up and Dylan's drawn like an amazing drawing of completion. I really liked it. I a I lot. kept it pretty. Speaking about the like, um, low value shift stuff, I was like, oh, I'll just I won't go too hard on that. And um, but sometimes that's just. Go like, back. I feel like I'm. You're painting it, Liad. I feel like um, both of y'all. I found out about mm -hmm. Vigo, the master of evil, trying to battle my boys. That's not legal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, v, v, the Carpathian, what's his name? Yeah. yeah. Be good with Ghostbusters names. Quick. Ghostbusters too, right? That's, yes. Yeah. We are like yes. the buzzing of flies to him. I should have drawn that one. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Well, you, you can always, you know, jump to yeah, that I one. Might have to uh, go back. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny that's great why didn't i think of that yeah. carla is inspired i think that, I think that would be cool to 
maybe someone can Photoshop my face in in the painting. Did you see how they made that? It was really cool. I saw a show about how they made Vigo move inside the painting, and they just like recreated the little painting, and so he could like. It was like a little set that was the painting. They didn't. I don't know, oh, nice! Cool. No, I didn't. I didn't really see neat. that. That's that's really cool. Yeah, you. It's just like a little warmer with your colors there, and you can. <laughs> Can you make a haunted painting, please? Uh... <laughs> oh, I've made a lot of haunting paintings. Yeah. Just haunting because they were so bad. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make like pink bubbles under the city. Anyway, Bottle Cap is Terry's sister's dog, Bottle Cap. I just really love that. And I worked really hard to make a comment below it. That's how he was here in Battle Cap. Bottle anyway. Cap. Hey man, comics. Nice. Whew. What other female versions of superheroes have extra powers? And wouldn't they have to? Have, I mean, like, technically, we're the weaker sex anyway. So, like, we'd have to have extra powers just to match the powers of the superheroes we're trying to be. We. I, well, I mean, when you start getting into su us. superpowers, it, all of that, you know, <laughs> just goes out the window because it. it you know no no one's like the weaker sex none of that matters anymore because like you know you're she hulk so it's like okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then in right. the comics it's overcompensated for and as you said that we're the stronger one then we why do i keep like identifying with female superheroes that's weird <laughs> um yeah. but the female superheroes are stronger ultimately but I can't think. You know, of it's like it's maybe not all. It was just maybe it's the ones I happen to read now that I'm mm -hmm. thinking about. Because like She Hulk doesn't, but like I said, Spider Girl or Spider Woman, she had like extra powers, and then there was um, Shira, of course, who has like extra powers. What um, extra powers did Spider Woman get besides getting drawn by Milan Kundera, which was great? Uh, right. Um, and controversial, she, but I, I thought it was great. Back in the day, she had, if I remember correctly, she she could create her um, webs. She didn't have to, uh, mm. like, like, she Toby could just Maguire magically Toby. make them. Hmm? Like Tobey Maguire. Yeah, uh, kind of, yeah, only. And um, she had a few extra powers. Like, I, I, I don't remember. This is this is when I was a kid. I don't, I do not remember that, that well. Um, uh, Supergirl is trying to think. stronger than Superman. Really? Hmm? How's it that work with um, It's like a, a like a kryptonite. I mean, a Krypton fem feminism trope or something. <laughs> they like a matriarchal society. I don't know. Somebody needs to take me to Krypton school. <laughs> right. Maybe I can um, get special treatment. Because... Oh, she, she's only stronger in, unless you mention uh, Martha, in which case he he rage he rages out. That's my okay. assumption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I was wondering about the She-Hulk. Um, she doesn't turn into like um, ten times her regular size to be super strong. So that's she gets a bit. A bit bigger. A bit bigger? Yeah. But Bruce Banner is like... like. Yeah. I think the difference, if I remember correctly, in the comics originally, the difference was Hulk would... He was stronger, but he also was uh, dumber. Mm -hmm. And could, like, he was just the was Hulk, you know, a monster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she, she kept more of her humanity when she turned into the Hulk mm -hmm. or She-Hulk. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an improvement, I would say. <laughs> yeah being able to access that immense power without um losing it well she's an attorney mm. that came later uh i, I only saw this i don't well actually that's not true i knew a girl at the bank who went as she hulk before the show came out what mm -hmm. did she do in the comics but she was not an attorney no what was uh, her job uh, I have no idea. She came in and out uh, throughout the throughout the years. Um, if, so I actually don't know. I didn't read um, 
certain comics <laughs> i'll put it that way uh it Didn't was read every comic <laughs> well definitely not every comic um <laughs> No, I, I actually have a huge gap in my uh, comic book knowledge because I lived, um, I grew up partially in Israel. And when I was growing up there, uh, there was no, this was not, this was, I don't want to say before the internet because the internet existed, but it was before you could read everything on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually had to like subscribe to Marvel directly and they would mail me uh, comics. And so it was very limited and I had to, I had to um, subscribe to certain books and they would, they would just mail that. And it was not cheap. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so I have a ton of uh, gaps in my, in my knowledge of, on comics and I, and I would come visit in America, uh, visit my family here and I would buy like, I'd go on shopping sprees and I'd buy like $200 worth of like uh trade paperbacks and mm -hmm. have to haul that with me back home like like i don't need to bring clothes i'll just bring my comics oh cool and um i remember I, one of my friend's dad's in australia there was also like you couldn't get every comic and have to order things from the states and there was this in adelaide there was this one comic shop that had so much but it was also um for yeah pretty expensive <laughs> like um it was all imported and what was the name there was this super fat book that was just like listings of everything that was i don't know if it was just like a catalog of like almost oh are you comic. thinking is the diamond um uh i'm trying to think what it was called They're, they have a, there's a few different types of books that did yeah, stuff that, like that because there was something like i remember just because i i I didn't even have to read the stories. I was, it was just like so many images and I was just like kind of um, loved the the art basically in whatever genre. <clears throat> and I remember Were these books uh, black and white? Were they like... Maybe. Um, and they also had like was... pri priceless as well. Like what things oh, were worth. What are you thinking about? Okay. Um, I don't know. There are a few things, but I one of my friend's dads was really into comics from yeah. from way back when. And um, and he would have boxes and boxes of them, and but I just I just had to get whatever was at like the supermarket, basically. <laughs> and most Overstreet. so most of my Overstreet, thank you, Matt. Oh my Overstreet. God. could be Overstreet. Mm. I was just thinking, we need Matt here so bad. <laughs> what is, wait? What is this Overstreet? O Overstreet. Is... Um, I have another question for Matt when you direct us to the black and white comics guy that Dylan could have had in Adelaide. But it's interesting that comics weren't available in Israel. What was the comics culture in Israel? What year was this? Like what time? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> it was by myself. I, it wasn't like a, no, uh, it, was, yeah. it was almost non-existent though. The price guide, it, the it, cover it, illustrations. Thank you, Maddie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there's not a big comics uh, culture there. And there was like one guy who did uh, comic books, but he did like these, they were like, it was basically like Mad Magazine type of thing where it's like comedy comics, right? Um, and it was funny, and it, but it was like very cartoony drawings and stuff, not superhero stuff at all, which well, is a, when I was younger, what I was into. There's that one dude that came to the United States and made Superman. Two guys, actually. They were Israeli, weren't they? Simon uh, and Schuster. Jewish. Yeah. A, a lot of uh, Jewish people were involved in comics uh, in in America when when comics were first starting out. Yeah. Mm. I always thought of Peter Parker uh, from Spider-Man as being Jewish, even though he's uh, canonically, I think he's Catholic, but um, or he's definitely Christian. But I always thought of him as being Jewish because um it kind of fit like uh it fit the personality and the guilt and the family and everything kind of worked but you know that's not the case but yeah hmm. is that also perhaps the thing of um like identifying with the protagonist is kind of what, oh. what a lot of hmm. i guess a lot of people 
or a lot of stories are trying to yeah. kind yeah. of cultivate that sense of like, oh yeah. That reminds me of like being in college when Harry Potter came out and I had like this whole uh, biblical framework for <laughs> for like the entire Harry Potter series. Yeah, prob- I mean, probably. Uh, so wait, you, you had a biblical framework for the Harry yeah. Potter series? Yeah, well, I was putting a lot of stuff into it. But, but yeah, I can't, you know, it would probably, <laughs> I feel like you're going to get off on the thing I'm rusty and unprepared for. But uh, yeah, Matt, do you remember where I was, what I was on about back then? Um, okay. But yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, like we all, you know, we all kind of. Um, the hero story. Yeah, we all want to find some, a hero or a, you know, story to identify with. Do you know Hebrew? Do you speak Hebrew at home? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Laura thinks the Superman guy is Canadian. He's Canadian? Is he from Canada? He might be. I, I honestly don't remember where he's from. Um, I know they both uh, got screwed over <laughs> massively financially, and uh, it's a really sad story. Hmm. What happened? Oh, they, like the companies made millions upon millions, and they uh, did not. The creators of Superman, uh, literally there's a story of the one of the creators of Superman not being able to afford tickets to go see Superman on Broadway when it was a, a show on Broadway. So he, he would stand outside the theater um, to see how it was doing, but he couldn't actually afford to go oh, to wow. go in. And they both, uh, I think, had, or at least one of them had some serious health problems and you know, they had to like do fundraisers just to cover um, the expenses and stuff. What was the thing about Stan Lee too at the end of his life? He had financial issues with money. really did he i don't know about he seemed that. to be involved in like everything he had cameos in all of the marvel films and i remember was it spider-man or x-men the cartoon in the beginning he would be on there and he'd be explaining stuff and and yeah. that was always interesting he was very um i felt like he's very identified with the marvel brand yeah it would be absolutely. surprising if he if he um yeah, there was a thing about it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know that he had financial. I don't know if he did have financial issues. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it because of how they set up all these contracts sometimes. But um, I used to see him around the conventions and stuff. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, he seemed like a nice guy. I, n- I never like got to like talk to him much or anything, but he always seemed really nice. I did. Wait a second. I did meet him once. Like I think I took a selfie with him at some point. Cool. Yeah. So it seems so enthusiastic. Yeah, the he was. The documentary yeah. about him is so romantic. The most romantic thing I've ever seen in my life. I'll have to look for that. I don't think I've seen it. It was on Netflix when it had Netflix. I can't remember what it's called though. I'm sure I can find it. But yeah. Or someone in the chat's going to tell us what it was. Yeah, I want somebody in the chat to tell us if Simon and Schuster were Canadian. Um, I need to put, know these facts. Matthew put Simon and Schuster just as a comment in the chat. Maybe someone can find out where yeah. they're from. <laughs> um, um, Siegel and Schuster. What's Simon and Schuster? Is a, a Simon and Schuster is a publisher. Yeah. I was just and about to also say also Schuster's the university where Superboy went to. Superboy? Yeah, Superboy went to Schuster University. Uh-huh. And they turned un- the University of Central Florida into Schuster University to film the TV show, which I thought was really cool at the time. Oh, okay. So that like it had the sign signs for Schuster University and stuff. Yeah. Are we using our superpowers for good? Are we? Carla, with great power comes great responsibility. Are we using our platform positively? 
I think so. If, if, if it was, for promoting was... art and uh, positivity. Those are yeah. all good things. Okay. That's one of the things I try and promote on my channel. Um, I people people ask me questions about painting and stuff like that, and I'm always I always try and you know teach what I can. Obviously, it's not exactly the setting that I can you know there's a limit to like what I can teach, but I also just talk about positivity and painting in general, because I think so many people in painting and art and drawing, um, you know, they, they feel like, Oh, they're not the best. So why even bother? And I hate that. I hate that so much. Mm -hmm. I just want people to like do it for the fun of it and not worry about the, not necessarily worry about the quality or, um, yeah. or the outcome or, or being, professional or doing it for work like no do it for fun like this is you know an enjoyable thing that uh enriches your life like do it for those reasons mm. i like that yeah totally it's cool when you work for like a a team like that like when when you um when you were getting answers from the comments that i sure appreciate a lot Joe Schuster, Canadian, Stanley, exploited by his business manager. That sucks. Uh, you think it would be funner if you were better at it? That makes sense. Oh. Having fun. It's hard to have fun if you think you're not good at it. Ah. Well, here, here's, the, here's the thing. You'll get better at it, yeah. right? That, that's the thing. You will get better at it. The more you do it, the more the better you'll get. And also if we're going off on a bit of a tangent about that, I remember years ago, I, I'd been working and I felt, I felt very much like I totally stagnated, hadn't improved in years. And I was very, very frustrated. I went back and looked at some of my old sketch, looked at the beginning of my sketchbook. And I'm like, wait, this was a year ago. Like I've improved so much in a year. And I, I couldn't see it at the time. Like my brain, until I went back and looked at my older, older drawings, could not tell that there had been any improvement. So, you know, try and keep those things in mind, keep your old sketches and old drawings, and you'll get better. The more you do it, the, the, the better you'll get. And the funnest part is when you're not good at it, you get better much faster. <laughs> Mm. It, it's when you get really good that it's frustrating because you're like every lit you're fighting for every little you know every little inch of improvement oh, i think yeah. there's also um things like focused learning like if it's hands for example which are notoriously challenging um and if you're like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna fill a page with hands and if you have a practice like that where you're really focusing on this one element of what is potentially a much bigger thing or just taking the eyes my eyes always yeah. look a bit weird like how do i do that and if you focus on something like that um and that's something that sam brisley was talking about last week like when it's just like i'm just gonna yeah. spend hours and hours just doing eyes then you start I was actually... to see like oh wow that's that was a hot forgotten tip right there yeah that that was that was good like if you you can do 50 pairs of eyes in a few hours. But if you're going to do 50 paintings of full portraits, that's going to take you longer before you've done that many eyes. <laughs> so if there's a particular thing which is just like annoying because it's like it always looks a bit wrong, then perhaps there's an opportunity to focus, like do some focus practice on that particular thing. Absolutely. I actually, I remember, I wanted to talk about that because I remember that uh, he had mentioned that last, last week. and. I have a little more information on that because right. I read the book that I'd posted about it. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's this book, uh, Peak Perform it's called Peak uh, Performance, I think it is. Um, and the, the, re the researcher who wrote the book, s to get into it, uh, the guy, one, a guy who knows him is the guy who came out with that 1500 hours idea based off of that research, but it's very, very loosely based off of that research. Um, and uh, so, but the book goes in, goes on to talk about a deliberate practice and how, um, like you said, breaking it down into little pieces uh, really helps. And also it's 
much quicker too. That's a big part of it. Uh, but you can take it even further. Like if you're, um, if if you're struggling with hands, then the question is, why are you struggling with hands? Right? Is it because the complexity of them? Is it because you're s struggling to control uh, your proportions as you draw them? Whatever it is, you can break it down even further, and you can be like, okay, so I'm going to work on just my proportions or I'm just going to work on cylinders to begin with, right? Because the fingers are like cylinders. So I'm just going to yeah, draw yeah. a bunch of cylinders in perspective because they change perspective all the time, right? Then I'm going then I'm going to connect two cylinders together and move them around and just do that. And that's not going to take a long time, but you'll get you'll get much better, much faster if you do stuff like that. Nice. Mm. Awesome advice. So good. Yeah, so uh, I, I did that, um, once I learned about that, I did that with my painting uh, to a degree. I, uh, I used to practice, I did a bunch of practices where I was trying to, I was trying to get better at uh, color matching. Uh, so I did a bunch of exercises where all I did was color match. I didn't even do any painting, just, just matching colors. And um, I did that with uh, one of the things that's uh, a lot of people find very difficult is matching value and and color because yeah, when you get yeah. like um, very saturated colors, it's very it fools our brain to think that it's you know lighter or darker than it really is. So I did a, I tried to match grayscale to um, uh, to like saturated colors. You know, spent like half an hour doing that. It improved, you know. It, it helps improve very quickly in my opinion so all kinds of stuff like that identifying your weaknesses is hard when you think all your weaknesses are your weakness <laughs> uh true uh, like, I, if you think the whole thing is your weakness you can't identify your strengths so you gotta identify your strengths so you can figure out what you're weak at maybe i don't know yeah i i think i think if i think if you're thinking of it that way um, then, uh, then maybe you're not looking at it, um, entirely realistically, you know, because I don't know that anybody is completely bad at everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, no. um, I think may like, maybe you're being too hard on yourself. Um, but if you have that distortion, you can't like this decide what to practice at yeah. well then recognizing that you have that distortion is a good is a good starting point you know um i i have i suffer from this in a, in some ways uh where i uh i don't often like i have a tendency to focus on the negative for myself not for others like i'm, I'm really really positive about other people but on myself i'm just like very very negative and i don't recognize like the things i've like all my successes like i just completely devalue them and don't pay attention to them and that's something i'm personally working on um but you know it, it's it's hard to notice but if you start talking about it you, um if you talk about it with someone even with friends you can kind of see that you're like yeah th this isn't true right like like the feeling that you know i feel like if i feel like i've had no success in life is kind of inaccurate if you think you know i'm not like by any stretch of the imagination the most successful person in the world at all but like i'm also not a complete failure you know so but what you just said about talking with friends like that 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 can be like just for life in general um that seems like uh yeah, that thing of um, being able to put things into perspective, perhaps. Um, and yeah. if it's if it's about drawing and painting, that maybe that thing of speaking to friends, like having some people that you can be like, I can't figure out what's why I don't like this. <laughs> There's something about it that I can't put my finger on. And then if if you're in like a if you invite someone to have a look. Because I, I remember not being like looking at my drawings and being like something is just irritating me about this and I just can't figure out what it is. <clears throat> and then if there's 
it can either take a lot of um, contemplation. But if you have people to be like, what, what's, what's jumping out at you as being wrong about this? And someone might be like, oh, the eyes are in the wrong place. <laughs> and um, oh, yeah. And like, it can just be having that kind of feedback can, can be so um, beneficial. <laughs> Um, this is so great. Your friends are calling you out here. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, this is positive true. and negative. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Leah is a Debbie you've Downer. Been, Debbie you've downer. been called a I'll Debbie take. Downer. <laughs> That's fair. No, um, no, no. I'll take that. John's that. probably right. Uh, what's this? We all like okay, F wins. FX knows I that. Do. What, what do I hate to do, possibly? Like choosing what you hate to do and then focusing on that until you don't hate it anymore. Is that the <laughs> idea? Just torture um, yourself for a while. Just yeah, a little bit. Be, because of struggling with it. Yeah, I mean, that can be <laughs> that can be something to do, but it's also worth like noting that you don't always have to do what you hate. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it depends, always. right? <laughs> if if it's something that you're avoiding because That's like so hands, for instance, if you like drawing people but you really hate drawing hands, well, maybe you should work on hands. But you know, if it's... if you don't love drawing cityscapes and you want to do portraits, uh, you know, it's that's all right. Like you don't have to do like wide cityscapes, you know, to to pull off portraits. So kind of kind of depends. Kind of depends. Um, um, but yeah, everyone follow um, Silesh, yes. who is who is such a wonderful, lovable person and also been a guest here. <laughs> it says because he has no friends, it takes a few years to see my piece with fresh eyes to realize what went wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <sorry>. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know if that's an invitation to speak up and be like, those eyes are in the wrong place or what? But well, uh, <laughs> good luck finding I'll, anatomical I will say this. I have, a, I have a discord and uh, people have, uh, I created a, um, a uh, what's it called uh, feedback uh, channel that people can go in and post their art and I'll you know as long as I have the time and the mental space to do it I will give feedback and try and help people uh, with their art uh, as much yeah, as I cool. can. We also have a Discord oh, yeah. because Leah was in the chat um, a while back and was like, how about Discord. how about Discord? Um, and if you want to get on it, because the links always expire, and I'm not sure about the wisdom of putting it in the YouTube description, because then we might have uh, uninvited <laughs> guests. But get in touch with us because we'd like. I can to help you with the. Discord. I can help you with the Discord a bit if you yes, want on how yeah, to cool. make it more. Um, Discord. Uh, we can talk later after the fact that how to make L it uh, le less discordant. <laughs> well, more yeah, safer and more less uh, you know trolly. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and all of that stuff. I'm not an expert. Like, oh my God, some people make discords. Like I'm, I'm part of this, uh, this discord um, for another YouTube channel that I mod for. And oh my God, they, they've made, they've created this discord and made it amazing. Like it's insane. Like how they, you know, I don't even know how they do it. Like you can make discord so like complicated where like you choose your own roles and you get notifications for certain roles and not for others and like certain channels you can or can't it's just all this complicated stuff mine's like bare bones basic mm -hmm. uh because i i'm not good at that stuff but you know it functions like you can talk to me you can post and you can ask questions and if you harass you'll get booted yeah. and that's the end of it yeah cool yeah so yeah. um we have a drawn together discord and I found it's been nice. cool for people to share their work there. So share your work on Instagram yeah. as well, because more people will see it. But in Discord, it's higher resolution than um, Instagram. Like you can really get in close to it, and that's really cool. And yeah, I also yeah. have been thinking that um, like a, a feedback uh, chat um, where people who who want some eyes on their work and some yeah. some honest, loving, but honest feedback. <laughs> Love it, so, not bad. Lo loving and honest. Um, yeah, yeah. In, in my uh, the way I did it, and I'm sh I think people would benefit from yours. I mean, I see your drawings. You're like, that's I'm you know looking at both of you, your drawings, your drawing skills are crazy good for all the portraits that you that you do. Um, Thank you. And uh, Thank you, you know, on my on my channel, the way I, the way I set it up was I did it so that I'm the only one who gives feedback. Um, 
just because I wanted to control, uh, I wanted to control so that people didn't go in there and start giving feedback, unsolicited Positive, feedback, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or or not in a positive manner, you know, because mm -hmm. regardless of what your skill level is, I'm trying to like my, my goal is to help you get better, not to like make fun of you. But I don't know that everybody has that, um, you know, uh, necessarily goal. Like some people, even when they're trying to be positive, they're negative um, <laughs> or they can tear you down, you know, and, mm -hmm. Um, I've gotten a lot, I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years that it was like not the most pleasant to get. So, um, so yeah, I just made mine so that I'm the only one who gives feedback in, mm -hmm. in there. Um, Laura has said, um, Laura's taken advantage of your feedback and it has been yeah. helpful. Cool. Definitely Laura's good. been great. Laura's been uh, a big part of my channel lately and, um, has really gotten into painting and has done some really nice paintings lately and it was it was great to see the improvement uh like i, I went went into their uh into their instagram and looked at some of their older paintings and i could really see the improvement uh you know lately and it, w it was really cool to see cool so i just have i'm totally off topic here but i have a question yeah. for you shannon um my image like I have to make it really dark to be able to see it. Whereas mm -hmm. the, the light that I'm seeing, it's more like this bright, but then the contrast is not good enough. Like it's harder to see on screen than it is in the real world. And I was wondering if you have any idea um, what I could do to make my camera see what I'm seeing. Oh, <laughs> uh, is it auto adjusting? No. Oh. Oh, and it looks like that. I think it looks great like that. It, it just has its own merit being an image and not what your eyes are seeing. Yeah. Well, if I, you turn it back down, it has the grit of the paper, which I enjoy. Yeah. It's just that the the contrast is not the same. I feel like the blue is much lighter. Yeah. Um, uh, than how it can you do any looks. editing? Are you using OBS or are you just... Uh... Um, no. I, I have... Um, I have like a mirrorless camera. I have the same camera as you. <laughs> right. Um, so I just like adjust the um, the ISO and like the um, the aperture and uh, like exposure time, although it's uh, video. <laughs> well, I'm full of misinformation today, so. <laughs> full of misinformation. I'll just leave it like this, but I, um, we can get we can get back to what we're talking about. I mean, before, I think but... it looks it looks great either way. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know how you'd adjust the contrast with the camera. Because I feel like the blue would be like this dark, but the white of the paper would be like this. And I just right. wonder if I could kind of bring it close to my... How I, I don't know it. how you do that uh, on the fly. I would it is one of those things I would do. Um, yeah, I think I would do it probably through like if you if you're running it through OBS, if not, I don't, not sure how you would do that. You know what it is a bit? I bet you got photo styles selected in the I camera guess. and that there's some of your photo styles, like you'll have like a portrait style that'll like neutralize everything or you'll have like a landscape style that'll try to like accommodate for the, for dynamic range situations where the darks will be too dark, but the lights will be too light. So it'll try mm -hmm. to, average it out yeah. but maybe there's um dylan's drawing space as a photo style programmed into your camera oh yeah is that L L -U -T -S? Could that be nice? LUTs. those are for LUTs. What, what's a lot i've never used a lot i will say um video production i uh and anyone who's doing uh, artwork that involves color um i bought special light bulbs um and I highly recommend investing in decent light bulbs because they make bulbs. a huge oh difference. Goodness. What kind of lights do you have? Yeah. Um, I got these through, um, I think it's waveform uh, lighting. Uh, but just any, any place that does like high quality, uh, uh, like the CRI has to be above uh, like 95 or something like that. Yeah, um, I, I have a, it's a four foot 
uh, LED strip that's a like looks like an it looks like a, what's it called old school uh, tube lights mm -hmm. um, fluorescent lights but it's LEDs inside okay. uh, and I, I I literally have it hanging off of my um, off of my easel uh, it, with like uh, gooseneck uh, uh, you know um, uh, like wires and um, uh, what are those things called? Um, zip, uh, zip ties. Like it's totally janked together, <laughs> but but it works. Awesome. That sounds great. Yeah, I rather have good lighting than uh, you know, a good like than worry about the setup entirely. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. The um, because you with the CRI of this Elgato the space looks really nicely lit. Daylight lights. Yeah, I have these. 5,000 Kelvin lights. Yeah. Um, I've got so many conflicting light sources in here. <laughs> well, you also have natural light from what I can see, which is, which is great. Um, uh, about that. Is that all fake? It's all <laughs> darkness behind her. Okay. She's actually in a cave. It's just a green screen. Yeah, I actually, yeah, um, yeah, about that. Uh, I have grow lights over here, and I have the window. But then I didn't. You, I didn't turn on my workspace light today, so I look different today, and the paper looks different. Everything looks different, but I can looks see good. the reference screen better today, which does not. Uh, but it, it's all like pretty visually close to me if I put it on the daylight thing on the Elgato thing. But yeah. it messes well, with. Like if my reference is on screen and I never draw in color under that light, so I don't know how much it really matters. Yeah, it, it's more for oh, color right. reproduction than anything. But like I, I bought these, um, these uh, like light bulbs a while ago that I was like, oh, it has like eighty five percent CR, whatever. You know, it's like oh, that's great. And then I switched to these, and I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Like literally, parts of my painting. I couldn't see before and then I could see. It was just like that yeah. that's insane that I literally couldn't could not see like these subtle transitions happening at all. Like it was impossible for me to see that before. That's mm. pretty cool. That's like yeah. um when you put on the red glasses to see the secret message. Yeah, yeah. But it's like when you take it out. Um Liat, are you part of any painting groups that have jury shows and do you think they are helpful? Um, I'm not part of any groups in particular other than, uh, the portrait society, but that's kind of new for me and I don't, Oh. yeah, I'm, I'm going this year to the portrait society conference, which is, um, also new to me This is my first time going. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Anyone who's going, by the way, uh, let me know, hit me up, say hi. Um, but, um, yeah, I've been a part of uh different shows uh group shows before um i've had i've had a couple paintings sell in those but i've also had no paintings sell in those um and i've also had a lot where i didn't get into them like i paid to you know you pay to get uh, to reviewed apply. and then yeah then you don't get in um which can be frustrating. Uh, don't t uh, to anyone who does do that. Don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's good to get out there. You know, you do want to get yourself out there if you're ready for it. Uh, which you know is obviously to each their own to determine. To determine yeah. that. You don't um, know if you're ready for it until it gets rejected. That's what I find out. Well, I, I should say don't feel. <laughs> Yeah, I would say don't feel don't feel bad if you get rejected though, because um, that's just the way these shows either. work. <laughs> don't yeah. feel good if you get accepted. Well, I would say feel good if you do get accepted. <laughs> don't feel bad. If you get rejected. Feel nothing ever. <laughs> feel nothing. Let's, let's all be voids of uh, of feeling. Yeah, uh, that that'll be safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's. I'm sure that's healthy. Um, <laughs> that's not going to cause any problems. Nothing is going to change my world. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm not part of any group uh, other than not, like some online groups and stuff. I do want to be part of more groups, if I'm being honest. 
I'm also really bad at being part of groups. I'm sorry, what was that, Shannon? Oh, I couldn't hear you for a second. You were just a bit muffled for a bit there. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm bad at being part of groups, too. Yeah. Especially online, I really suck at it because I'm I'm bad at like keeping up on like like uh, Discord and communities like or or you know posts since like I cannot I'm part of a Discord that I mod and I'm like I go in there and I'm like uh, all right I'm out bye because there's just too much happening and I can't possibly catch up so I'm just like and eh, no, I'm gone. Um, relatable. <laughs> yeah. So that's so funny because um, you're the one that made us do the oh, you didn't make it. You inspired the Discord and then I made the Discord and I never look at the Discord because I just forget it yep. exists. And I, I look like at the, it at least once yeah. a week. What? Overachieving again. At least. I, I look at my Discord uh my Discord's very quiet though, so mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. But um anytime people like tag me and talk to me, I'm 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 good about that, but keeping up on like an active like community, I'm really bad at. Um, I, I have yet to figure out how to be better at it. Um, so I want to know how we can use it for drawing together. I want to I want to try to make it like a, a community, a group. Discord? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. It has a lot of potential. You can also use it uh, as like a Patreon type of thing. It has, uh, you can make, uh, like, um, in Discord, you can make, um, you know, uh, you can make tiers where people have to pay to get access to certain things. Um, if you wanted to create, like, a members area or something like that, um, you know. That would be cool. I don't know, like, I'm not doing any of that, but I can see that being a way of, like, trying to support an artist, uh, you know. Or if you get too big of having like special, you know, like special areas or special talks or like members only events and stuff like that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Special talks just sounds special and compelling. <laughs> how yeah. long um, is your Discord? Or how, how, when did you start streaming? Uh, I started streaming, um, oh shoot, it was, so I don't remember exactly, um, I think it was around 2019 or uh, something like that. On Twitch? Uh, but then I took a huge break at some point. I was actually part of a, of a community on, I only streamed on Twitch in the beginning and I was part of a community that um, is still around but still uh, floundering a little bit because the main streamer that used to be uh, the focus of it kind of disappeared. Um, but there's a huge art community on on uh, on Twitch, and that's where I originally streamed. That's how I know Don Lee, for instance, um, who's in the who's in the chat right now. He also streams on Twitch. Cool. Uh, he's also an artist. Uh, yeah, and that's I I got to know a lot of people through that but then i took a huge huge break um because i i got the, i started working on crapopolis and i just i didn't have time to do multiple things there was yeah. other stuff in my life happening and so i just let it go um and then i uh and then in the last year i started focusing on it again uh, because i um I suck at like all the other social media stuff. Like I'm bad at, I'm super bad at Instagram. I'm bad at posting. I'm bad at like, I'm, 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 I can't write blogs. I've tried. I can't do blogs. I've, I've, I've tried all these different things and I'm just really bad at a lot of it. So, um, I went back to streaming, which I can do. I even I even tried to do videos recently and I really sucked at those too, <laughs> but like I, and it's almost the same thing, but I can stream. So I was just like, I'm just going to focus on what I'm actually semi-decent at. Or, yeah. well, at least something I can do re repeatedly. Whether or not I'm decent at it, you can de you can come by and determine for yourself. <laughs> uh, but at least at least I can keep up with it. Yeah, that's cool. Like, um, You're great the... at being on Drawn Together. 
Yeah. Well, thank you. You are great. great and this. yeah, your conversational. I'm not, I suck at it. <laughs> oh. You're great at being on Drawn Together, Shattered. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, you're, you're part of you're you're a core part of Drawn Together. You're not just great at it. you're I'm probably a gonna part cry. that holds it up to what it is. Oh gee. <laughs> oh um, my god. <laughs> yeah, they. How are you able to paint that? How are you painting? You're painting and talking. That's pretty. Oh, cool. going really this good. is actually easier than my stream because on my stream I have to read all the comments and right now I'm I'm sorry chat I'm ignoring you because I'm just That's talking right. we, we'll relay what we can of the chat I'm a fan yeah. of you were talking about pinky before oh thank you <laughs> but, I love that you wear a glove I, and I put the little right and left on them too <laughs> Because I, I pull because I, I pull them off and they're inside out and I want to know what side is the right mm -hmm. side when I go back to them. But yeah, that's good. I, I do this because I have uh, I have well, oil paint is toxic some of it, mm -hmm. um, but also I have cats. Uh, I have three cats and a dog, and sometimes I need uh, clean hands instantaneously. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, cool. Uh, by the way, if I can, I would like to talk briefly about oil paint safety. If you oh, don't yeah. mind. Please, please do. It's uh, please very do. important. Because one of the things that comes up is people are who aren't familiar with oil paints think oil paints are toxic. And there is some element of truth to that. Uh, and they're scared of them. And I was too. When I first started, I tried to avoid oil paints because I, I was kind of afraid of them. Um, but here's the thing. Pigments can be toxic. Uh, lead, if if you're using lead white, obviously lead is toxic. Uh, cadmiums are heavy metals. They are toxic. Uh, but cadmiums also exist in acrylic paints, and they also exist even in watercolor paints, which is just bonkers in my opinion, but whatever. Um, but yeah, all those pigments are toxic regardless of what paint they're in. They're just, they can just be toxic. So like, don't eat your paint. Uh, which is one of the uh, channel mo one of my channel mottos, which is don't eat your paint. Don't chew on your uh, brushes. Don't, don't use it as a moisturizer. What would you say? <laughs> Wash your brushes? No, don't, don't chew, chew on your brushes. I see people yeah. put their brushes in their mouth and I go, oh, I'm don't, gonna... yeah, don't That's chew fine. on your brushes. Um, and, um, um, and uh, what's it called? Um, solvents, anything that has solvent in it any medium that has solvent in it, even if it doesn't, even if you can't smell it, often has fumes and is toxic. So you better have good ventilation. Those are all the like warnings that most people know about. I'd like to talk about the thing that a lot of people don't know about, mm -hmm. and that is spontaneous combustion. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, really? Is this about linseed oil in piles? Yes. I love this topic. Yes. Yeah, so linseed oil, um, the way linseed oil dries, uh, Shannon already clearly knows about this, but the way linseed oil dries is it it, um, it cures um, or oxidizes. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so as it oxidizes, it generates some heat. Now, it's not a problem on the canvas, but when you have a saturated paper towel or cotton you know piece of uh, cloth or something and you crumple it up and you throw it in the trash can and it traps all that heat inside of it it can i mean it doesn't take much to light a you know uh what's it called uh paper towel on fire you know yeah. wow. really so and hmm? has a really low flash point yeah yeah and that can cause uh, a fire and uh, it has in the past now the truth is it it doesn't happen very often to painters because you're not usually like saturating your you know your uh what's it called uh your uh, your paper, paper, paper towels towel. or your rags that much but mm -hmm. you know it can it can it's theoretically possible as but uh so be careful the way to combat that is you can lay out your uh, rags flat to dry or you can put it in like a jar. Like I have this jar 
and I have water and uh, dish soap in it. It's just like a pretzel thing, you know, whatever. And then you take this eventually to the waste disposal uh, place is what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Um, cool. So that's, that's our best public safety announcement on Drawn it, Together. Yeah. Much appreciated. I, and I was not yeah, aware I just, that it could just, just one to mention it. Because people don't know about it. And it's actually like there's been some places that have actually burned down from that. And it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Is that what happened to Beerstadt's studio? I always I wondered that. He had like a New York studio that burned. And he would have students um, and stuff. And there are all these lost burn Beerstadt paintings. I wonder if that's what I don't know. I, I know. Um, I know uh, what, some paint manufacturers had that happen to them. I think it was, uh, okay. I think Mark. Um, uh, what is his name? Um, Dramix Paint, the guy who makes, um, he's on on YouTube. He has a channel, Dramix Paint. Uh, I think that's what happened. They were making paints and they had a fire. I think that was what happened there. If not him, then I think, um, I also think Blue Ridge uh, Paints had that happen. So yeah, it, it's happened. It has happened to a few. Is Dramix Paint that he, um, he talks to the camera and he's got kind of gray hair and glasses? Yes. Yeah, I like that guy. That's too bad his stuff burned. Because he's always yeah, talking he... about his solvent-free paints. But the Lindsay yeah. all got him. <laughs> that sucks. Yep. Oh. The, uh, I'm not I'm not positive it was from that, but I, if I remember correctly, I think that's what it was. I learned a lot about color mixing from that dude. Yeah, his channel is his channel's great. Um I, I learned a lot from him too. Um yeah. When I first started getting it back into painting and getting into oil painting, I um, I wasn't that familiar with a, a lot of aspects of it. So I, I did a lot of online research. Uh, his his channel was one of them, one of the channels I went to most in the beginning. Um, uh, Lena Danya was also great. Um, she's also on YouTube. Um, She's fantastic. Um, yeah. D-A-N-Y. She actually has a story about, uh, uh, this is also a safety concern. She has a story about how she, uh, how she drank her, uh, her uh, turpentine oh. by accident uh, <laughs> when painting. She kept her, uh, gam I think it was Gamsol. She kept her Gamsol or mineral spirits or whatever it was in a jar next to her other jar of water. Mm. So don't do that. That's something um, I really like about the gloves is it keeps you aware of what you're touching. Yeah. It def mm. The gloves definitely keep you aware. I'm not a, f I don't enjoy wearing them, but it is, uh, it is very helpful. I'm a pretty clean painter. I don't get a lot of paint on my hands, but every once in a while, I'll accidentally stick my stick a finger into something, and mm -hmm. and it's really nice to be just like, okay, I can't cl I can't clean this off, especially if it's like phthalo blue, and it's like, ah, this is like, I don't, this is never going to come off. I'm just going to throw these gloves away and get a new pair. That's like the main reason I don't paint. I hate getting the paint on me. Like even if I have glasses yeah. and mixing any kind of food, like it'll never be on any surface with food. But like I'm like really uh, hyper vigilant about it to the point of like not doing it. <laughs> I tried to start a blog about art supply safety during the pandemic, and it being the kind of social media that I suck at, I didn't continue. Yeah. It. It's hard. I, I really, str I feel your pain. I struggle with social media stuff a lot. Like I do, I want to post more and be more active and, and I'm really bad at it. I'm dyslexic and like, it takes a lot of mental energy for me to like go online and like interact with people and do all this stuff. It's very hard for me. Thank you for struggling. But streaming, I, I find that a lot easier. So people are welcome to stop by and talk to me during my stream because yeah, then cool. I can, it's so much easier than like going online and talking with people. I don't know why. I've yeah, noticed so... during our shows that um, when you're there, it's like, it's cool that you're, you have this chatty character in the chat, 
like you're um, sharing your thoughts and stuff. And I think for a lot of people focused on their work, <clears throat> it's difficult to switch into that mode of like, oh no, I say something. Um, but um, yeah. So, oh, um, I, you know, I, I try not to overdo it when I'm in like, but <laughs> I probably overdo it on, on your channel when I, oh, it's, it's just good. To, it's no, good no. to have um, cause having that something to respond to. It's really great. It's great when the, yeah. the chats. That was just about what yeah. I was going to say, because yeah. whenever I, whenever I stream, if nobody talks to me, I'm just miserable. Like, <sighs> like honestly, like it's yeah. just not fun. If nobody talks. <laughs> my my yeah. sister streams. Um, and when she started doing it, my mum would always be there and mum would, <laughs> mum would feel like people are getting too noisy in the chat, even though you, know, <laughs> you don't hear it during the stream. But <laughs> Claire had told me that afterwards, mum was like, oh, she was just talking so much. And Claire was like, that's good. Are you talking about me? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I, I love my mom. I'm really close to my mom, but. Oh, nice. I like to never know if she's in chat. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, I love her absolutely. Like we, we have a really good relationship, but at the same time, I don't want to know when she's in chat because it's just I don't know, it's just one of those things, right? Like moms are a certain type of relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. Um I need my son that? in the chat to talk about this. Is she aware of that? I don't know if she's aware of that. Uh yeah i'm not sure i'll be honest uh i just I, told my son this morning that sometimes i don't comment on videos and stuff because he might see it yes exactly <laughs> exactly i just think it's a it's one of those things right like there's just something about that kind of relationship like yeah. i just don't want to it's, it's cool i know it's public just you know and i know you support me but I don't need your comments. I need, Thanks, mom. I need yeah. my. I need to learn to start a YouTube channel so I can be in the comments endlessly. <laughs> I would totally do that. <sighs> make make fake accounts and go in and just start uh, commenting. Yeah. And he'll be like, yeah. oh, shit, "Mom, is that you?" <laughs> like, yes, it is me. Gotcha. <laughs> One thing, um, if I can, I also want to bring up because I, I bring this up in my stream a lot, uh, and I'm it, it's uh, appropriate for my drawing at the moment or my painting rather. Uh, one thing I want people to, uh, you know, if 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 people are getting into painting or drawing, uh, you know, in art art in general, uh, don't be afraid of um, a making mistakes, and also don't be afraid of just correcting said mistakes. And even if your correction is wrong, that's also okay, because that happens too. Uh, the reason I mentioned that is because sometimes people get really hung up on like, oh, well, I got this right and I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to take, I don't want to make the, you know, I don't want to chance like, oh, yeah. this eye is good, but like the re it's not fitting in with the rest of it. So I don't want to touch it though, because the eye is perfect. Like now just, just go for it. You'll, you'll paint the eye again, don't worry about it. The reason I'm mentioning that is because I think I put part of the hairline here wrong, and I'm just going to go in and kind of fix that. But even so, if I'm now wrong, that's okay. I'll fix it again later. <laughs> there are those. Sometimes there's like a happy like thing, like a like an accident that looks magical that I will protect at all costs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do try and keep a uh, ran like a certain degree of randomness in my paintings. Like, I I don't know if you noticed earlier, I was using the brayer, and I I try to keep some of that color transfer and some of the like happy mistakes that come out of that. I try and keep that in my paintings uh, because I feel like that adds an artistic element to it. So, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but. Um, like what the... surface are you working on too? I saw in one of your streams, like where you're scraping stuff off. Is it super smooth surface that you're working on? Um, I usually work, well, I work on a camera, hello. Uh, I work on a few different um, 
a few different surfaces. The one I'm currently working on right now is just watercolor paper with uh, acrylic matte medium on it. A lot of times I work on, um, I work on uh, like boards that are like pre gessoed, like pre like ampersand boards or uh, the cheaper brand, which is uh, Da Vinci uh, dual sided panels. Um, <laughs> I've, I have one behind me. That's why I was looking at the, at the name. But yeah, I work on a bunch of things like that. Um, I don't like canvas that much. And then I don't like texture that much. I hate dry surfaces as well. If something feels like a dry surface, um, I hate it. Um, uh, in oil paint, if you have a very absorbent surface, it feels like it's sucking out all the oil and it feels very dry and the paint doesn't move. Mm. Uh, Nicholas Aribe loves those. I hate them. Um, so I, uh, I use, um, I use acrylic matte medium. I have, um, actually my favorite is, uh, this one, uh, golden, uh, golden, uh, fluid matte medium. It levels really well, which is one of the reasons I like it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really, really good stuff. Uh, and you can oil paint on that and you don't have to sand it or anything. So, you know, pluses there as well. I'm like, just so. Um, so yeah, and uh, that's usually to my go-to. I, hmm? I know you're, I heard you're supposed to sand gesso and do like three coats, but I never, never did. Yeah. Be it's just to make it smoother. You don't have to. Yeah, if you want it to be smooth, because sometimes like just the the texture underneath is cool. Like yeah, if cool. if it's like it'll kind of level out a bit. But if there's like some cool brush strokes and stuff, and it just kind of um, yeah, it depends. Some people want a super smooth surface, and um, but if you're happy for those like strokes to kind of come through and interact with the paint, then um, yeah, that's. Totally cool. So I, I have this thing is a wipeout tool. Mm -hmm. You can get this one's from Creative Mark, but they have these from all kinds. All a lot of companies have something like this. And this is just like a rubber tip of different, you know, different shapes. Um, and because this is a pretty smooth surface, if I need to, I can just go in and, um, you know, I can just go in and like this one's very fine. This one's a little less fine, but like I can just go in and though. draw in parts if I want to cor yeah. make corrections or whatever. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I saw one of your time lapses. Um, yeah. How you're like drawing <laughs> just by like wiping the paint out just to kind of reestablish where things are. And um, yeah, and kind of using my, my paintings drift a lot uh, when I paint them because I, I'm not very careful about keeping everything in the right place. Um, and so I personally, to make my life easier, I actually use Photoshop a lot, although you can use other programs. I take a I'll take a photo of this and I put it into Photoshop and I overlay the reference um, you know, and then I can see where I need to make corrections and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but having said that, you know, I, I do want to point out to anyone who's like new to, to art, to painting or drawing or whatever, um, that is not a good, um, that's not a good crutch to be, to like be dependent on. So, you know, learn or work towards doing it freehand in the beginning and then, you know, take advantage of the, of those tools, I would say, because, um, yeah, you definitely want to be able to do it freehand, at least close, you know, <laughs> at least to a degree. Um, that, that would be my only, only comment I want to uh, make about that because I know people, you know, um, people are weird about like tracing and, and using technology and so on. People are weird about that. <laughs> Always a whole bunch of comments. Oh, good. People um, are freaking weird. Uh -huh. Some some of the comments are weird. No, no, just in general, <laughs> like people get weird about different stuff. Ah, uh -huh, about using like yeah, technology. Yeah, I if can it can help you to like discern like 
see things differently. Uh, super yeah. helpful. Um, I'm also kind of like a what people don't know about my art won't hurt them. <laughs> like True. You, don't, you don't need to know how we got here. But now yeah. I just draw on the live stream so everybody knows how I got where I do. Yeah. But I, I crutch on the on the site size method real hard sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I use that too. Um, Don Lee is absolutely right too. Yeah, step, stepping mirror, back. Yes. Oh, using a mirror. Super I look hard. in a mirror oh. and see my mistakes every day. <laughs> That's about. I do so too, uh, but you know, <laughs> then then I get. <laughs> It's usually after the shower, I'm just like, uh, what have I done with myself? And then I just go get dressed and start my day, you know. <laughs> I look in the mirror and just brush my teeth. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I, I yes, my <laughs> dentist, come on now, lol. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we all do it. You, don't we? Don't we all do it? Yes. As Dunley was saying, um, I used to get down if no one was in the chat. But I've oh. gotten in the habit of talking through my thoughts and process, even if no one has stopped to say anything yet. And it's I helped keep positive. Yeah. I need that yeah. skill. In the meantime, come talk to me in my chat. If I ever yeah. And Julie said, I actually got my 14 year old in a literary forum and I knew it had to be her asking the author those questions. That's cool. <laughs> That's so cute. I caught my daughter in <laughs> a literary awesome. forum. forum. <laughs> I caught my son listening to Neil Diamond one time. <laughs> so what, what did you get up to this afternoon? <laughs> Nothing. That's so cool, though, that, that they recognized them. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Don Lee's stream is a lot of fun. He he um, he's a digital artist, and he does um, does a lot of different types of stuff. Uh, man, the guy's got range, so he's done a lot of different things in his cool. on his streams, but. He's a lot of fun, but yeah, it, it's tough. A lot, a lot of times there aren't a lot of people in the stream, and um, I, I suffer from that as well. Especially because I, I stream. I don't stream at the best times in the world. Uh, <laughs> I stream. I stream after work on Monday and Wednesday, and it's like late at night, and a, uh, a lot of times a lot of people can't, you know, be there for that. Uh, my Sunday streams generally are a little more. A little busier because it's more during the day. Des is often there, and Don Lee shows up a lot too. But um, but yeah, it's just you know I, I get off I get off of work at like eight, and then I I schedule my stream for like eight thirty, and um, you know people don't you know it's it's eight thirty on Monday night or on a uh, Wednesday night, and that's you know that's if you're Central Time if you're <laughs> For East Coast or on the other side of the world, then it's a whole other whole other thing. Mm-hmm. That's like my so. Friday night super fun draw, and I won't I won't uh, promote it at all during the week. I just decide like right half an hour before the Friday night super fun draw to do the Friday night super fun draw, and then hardly anybody comes to the Friday night super fun draw, and I'm like, where is everybody? I don't have a social life, and it's Friday night, and come to my but they're busy, they're doing things, and. Or, and have or the fact oh. that you're not promoting it might yeah, also that, be a factor. That might that contribute, actually be a factor. Yeah. But now everybody knows that occasionally, randomly, there is a Friday night super fun draw. How would Europe people is... find out about your Friday night super fun draw when would, it happens? I would suggest that they subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications. And what is your YouTube channel? Well, my YouTube channel is Shannon Hagenhagen. And the title might change because who knows? Um, but right now the link is in the description because Dylan always watches out for me on my social media engagement. And it's because of Dylan that I have 300 subscribers today. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh, your hair's so long. Um, hi cat. cat. (laughs) It's a cat. He looks like the Dean of Studio. He's, oh, hello. Oh, hello. (laughs) What a very gorgeous cat. Hi, Dresden. Wait. His name, get in the frame. The, the, in the, the, frame. Fa- the face the, finder is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Confused. It doesn't too know much, what it doesn't know what a cat is, so it's yeah, like too, too much hair. Ignore the cat. Ignore the cat. <gasps> totally yeah, misleading about AI and cats earlier. That is a pretty freaking cat. Out of AI yeah, is actually cats. Horrible. 
Yeah, it was like somebody asked the thing to generate a, a picture of a room with no cats. I hope this isn't the ter a continuation of my misinformation from earlier in the stream, but it might be. So get your fact checking hat on. Oh, he's <laughs> licking you. You must be delicious. He likes his clothes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we I have three cats. This is Dresden, um, named after the wizard Harry YouTube. Dresden. Oh, Liad, 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 your YouTube link is doesn't linky. It, it's not. Isn't linking. it? Really? That's huh? what it said. Broken from the website doesn't link. All right, I will have a look. Um, okay. And anyone who anyone else who streams or has a channel, put it in the chat, and, yeah. and we can all subscribe to each Down other. The, yeah, because it seems to have a few streamers here. Is this a hat stream? Uh, Got a dig for my fat chicken. Yes. Um, it is now a hat stream. And what was my misinformation? Oh, misinformation. Got got it. Uh, the something, something about asking the AI to make a picture of a room with no cats. And that I had to like, like show the whole room. And then there was like supposed to be no cats in it. But then like upon further investigation, it did in fact have a cat in it. I yeah, do. Not, I have not heard about that, but um, well, Tony just told me this. I will. I will. Cute. I will make a real quick comment about AI. Um, check out uh, in my in my uh, channel. You can also find the links. But check out the uh, Glaze project, and um, it's Glaze and Nightshade from the University of Chicago. They are doing. Uh, they have these programs to help fight. Uh, to protect artists against AI. Uh, the glaze adds a texture to your work to make it so that they can't really train on your work. Um, and Nightshade is designed to corrupt their, uh, <laughs> their, actual, their actual models and to poison them. And you can use them on artwork and you can use them on personal photos as well. Um, so uh, worth, worth doing. Cool. Just, you don't and you don't have to say that you do it in fact it's actually better that you don't because they uh that way they won't know <laughs> uh but yeah <laughs> Hi, so, so so how, how do you how do you use those uh well so they they have a program that you can download and if you can't run it on your computer for some reason like it's too hard uh they have a web portal and you get a certain amount of free, um, uh, free uh, ones every uh, every day or every month. And I can send you, Dylan. I'll be happy to send you the links as soon as we're done with this. I'm happy to send you the direct links to it if you'd like. Cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention it because I uh, am not a fan of the current AI generation and how they uh, exploit artists. So yeah, yeah. thought yeah. I'd mention that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, You're a wellspring of useful links and book titles, also. <laughs> I try to be. It's awesome. It's working. You do try. I mean, I don't yeah. know that you try. I mean, it's nice that you try. It is obvious that you're doing it. You know, you're trying and you're succeeding. So I'm trying to say, dang, that cat loves well, you. you. That is a loving <laughs> cat. Looks yeah, so he's my little boy. He was he supposed to be my so my. Uh, my girlfriend's cat, but he ended up being my cat. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're kind of coming up on the time, I we think. We are. I mistaken. also just saw that. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. When the markers come out, I need to put it down. So that's. Thank you. When I start everyone. Planning. Your, uh, your uh, drawing, Shannon, is looking so good. I, thank you. You know, one thing I, I kept meaning to bring this up and, um, because I, I, I see your, you guys, uh, both of you, see your drawings and how good you are at it. And, you know, I, I draw, I do, com well, I don't do comic books anymore. I do storyboards. But, you know, I think my drawings are pretty good. But um, I'm a much, much better painter than I am a drawer for some reason. And um, I think, like, finding whatever speaks to you in art is so important and so uh cool and the seeing <laughs> <Bye, Justin. laughs> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and fi- finding that and seeing you know people people find that is so cool because I I've seen I've seen uh, Dylan's work. Um, you know I've seen I've seen Dylan paint uh, for different uh, things, but I also see I've seen him uh, you know do all this, the drawings and now the the watercolors and everything. It's so cool to see um, you find that. So that's all. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Dylan is inspiring so, yeah. for all of us. Okay. Thank you so Speak much for joining for us. us. This conversation feels like we could just keep going for another two hours, but perhaps we'll just do it again someday. Okay, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well. And, um, um, you both are welcome to be guests on, on, my, uh, on my streams anytime. Oh, cool. uh, Yay, can we? That'd yeah. be fun. Absolutely, awesome. anytime. I don't do an interview style, but we can totally just chat. Like, yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, hang on, chat. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't um, like interview styles. Laura I is, like um, to just randomly chat about stuff. Laura's uh, um, grieving the, the end of the stream. Yeah, um, uh, I have to get back to work, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but yeah. this was a great break in the day. And I will finish this at some point uh, today. or uh, Well, I don't know that I'll have time today. But I'll finish it soon, and I'll post it. So. Okay, yeah, cool. I'll blend this into oblivion and, and then post it. When yeah, it's everyone, done you can that. tag us when you're sharing your work because we'd love to see it and and share it. And thank you all for drawing along. Thanks for putting up with me. Painting, it's um, we love putting up with you every week. It's thank it's you. not absolutely not, not difficult. It's it's I great. It's, Sometimes it's, I'm kind so of a fun. bitch. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> It it makes for a great show though. Um, <laughs> cool. Oh, all right. I well, I gotta get going. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thank you care. all for stopping and, by. Um, everyone in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been great. Show. Thanks everyone, and we'll see you again. Right. Thank oh, you. Bye. We'll see you. So we'll wait bye, something together soon. Bye. Yes. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, the tag. We should use.